Hello. In this video, we'll see a Python implementation of an article by Brian Hayes, published in the Scientific American magazine on November 1983. The title of this article is A Progress Report on the Fine Art of Turning Literature into Drivel, and what it proposes is generating text starting from other text using weighed random number selections. If you want to read the full article, you find the links in the video description. The mechanism is quite simple. First of all, select an alphabet that is going to be used in the output. To simplify the problem, we'll use the uppercase English letters from A to Z, the space character and the apostrophe. Due to memory constraints that we'll see later, we cannot select the whole range of alphanumerical characters. The second phase implies counting the occurrences of each character in the alphabet we've just selected, and save them in an array. This array has 28 slots, because we have 26 letters plus 2 other characters. The interesting part happens now. If you let the computer select a random number in a weighed manner, based on the frequency of each letter, you'll see some kind of structure in the text. At this stage, most of the words generated are random, but we can improve the output if we consider the frequencies of previously chosen letters to generate the current one. If we start from the letter T, for example, we are certain that in the base text, the letter that follows it is H. To save this data, we can use an array for each letter, which means a 2D square matrix. This method can be extended to more letters. If we save the frequency of the previous two letters and the current one, we'll need three dimensions, thus we'll need a cube matrix, and so on. Depending on the considered dimensions, called order in this exercise, and the number of characters in the alphabet, our matrix will be larger and larger. We'll have 28 elements for the first order, 784, 28 to the power of 2 for the second, 21,952, 28 to the power of 3 for the third, etc. This rise in memory usage means that you won't get very far if you use a normal matrix. However, if you print the matrix for each order, you'll notice that the bigger the order, the more zeros will be in the data. This means that, in theory, you can work on sparse matrices without running out of memory. We'll now see my implementation for these cases and execute the program using Shakespeare's sonnets as a base text. Starting from the top of the script, we can see the order variable. The C's list contains words that are used as a starting point by the generative algorithm. A for loop iterates through each seed word and generates text of a fixed length, i.e. the length variable. Each seed word must be at least order minus one long. After setting these variables, we need to create the alphabet as I discussed earlier. Finally, the base text is read from a normal text file. We'll now see what the function in this script do. Starting from Gen Matrix, you can see my previous video here where I explain how it works. The classifier function counts the frequency of each letter based on the previous letters and saves the result in a matrix. Characters that are not part of the output alphabet are ignored. The generate function uses the frequency matrix to generate letters, starting from the seed word. When each new letter is generated, the oldest letter is removed from the current matrix of previous letters. This list represents the current index of the frequency matrix. Once a new letter is generated, it's printed and appended to the list. This process is repeated a number of times selected by the user.
On my virtual machine, I was able to go up to the sixth order using unsigned 16-bit integers NumPy arrays before running out of memory during the creation phase. By using these settings, in fact, you would need nearly 20 gigabytes for the seventh order and 700 for the eighth. Without changing the main algorithms, what I did next was to modify the script by adding remote capabilities. I also added some text pre-processing to remove consecutive white spaces and extraneous characters. Finally, I let the program choose the seed word based on a random text substring. This way, the user doesn't need to know the content of the web page to set a seed word. Something mentioned in the article is that a text can be generated from multiple sources to get even more interesting results. That's it for this video, like and subscribe to learn more about Python, bye bye.